Yeah, I came and hung out at my house, um, and we tried to do something like as a family, just to see if we could. We tried to bond over we tried basketball. To, we tried to watch the Knicks. It didn't go great. But they were playing the Cavs. Yeah. And so the Cavs were blowing them out. Yeah, Brad wanted us to flip over from Bucks Pacers. Yes, he did. Understandable to go yes. watch the hometown team. Yes. And, and then slandered Tim Hardaway, the most entertaining right. player they have. Yes. He is a volume scorer. Not efficient, but he is giving us entertainment. Guess who ain't invited next time? Killjoy Bray. That's right, Brad. First name, the Chargers. Because Phillip Rivers' squad is 10-3 and and playing the prolific Pat Mahomes and the 11-2 Chiefs tonight. Bo, how surprised would you be to the Chargers? To see the Chargers finally do it and beat this team. Okay, so if there were a surprise in them winning, it would be that they're the road team on Thursday Night Football. And this typically doesn't work out so well for the road team on Thursday Night Football. But just the idea of the Chargers beating the Chiefs, they're one game behind them in yes. the standings, right? Now, the tiebreaker would go to division record after head-to-head. It would be a little tough for the Chargers to win on a tie because they're like what they're two games behind now in terms of division record. But, hey, man, this is a really good team. We saw them do it on national television against Pittsburgh the other night. I could see them winning this game. I, you could make an argument they're the best team in the AFC. Yes, you could make that argument. And the reason that most don't is because I don't think most people, and I count myself in this population for a lot of this season, they didn't appreciate, they do not appreciate just how good they are. The only two losses the Chargers have, Bo, are to the Chiefs in week one and to the Rams. This Chargers team basically has been erased from this season's general conversation because they don't have that offense allegedly. But I went to Football Outsiders before the show and saw that their offense is number two by DVOA ahead of the Rams now. There should be no reason why Phillip Rivers is left behind. The reason is they're the Chargers. Like, that's what this is. Like, this is a measure of the brand name affecting what you think about the actual team. That's affecting everything for them. They can't get people to go watch their games at home. Like, they've done all this basically playing a road game every week. And what they've got over Kansas City as it stands right now is the Chargers don't have that weak defensive unit. In fact, they have a good defense. The Chiefs have a real, live, legitimately weak defense. Like, if something happens and you hold the Chiefs to 17 in the postseason, can you be sure their defense is going to hold the other side to fewer than 17 points? Something like that is fairly unlikely. So, this like this is a real, live, legit. Like I say, they won that game against Pittsburgh. That's a game that we go into thinking mm-hmm. that they're going to lose it. Of course, it doesn't help that Pittsburgh lost the game before the game after. Okay, cool. But I still feel like in the AFC, there is no more complete team than this one. Yeah, and the Chiefs going into this game are coming off of that game against the Ravens where we saw that if you do the ball control plus defense thing with just enough offense, you can make it interesting. Now, the big question mark, of course, is Melvin Gordon, who is one of the six players in the league this year to have 800 rushing yards and 400 receiving yards. He is questionable. That's a problem. But the Chargers have more wins than Phillip Rivers has kids, and that should be celebrated by somebody. Also, I don't know if you heard, but uh, the Chiefs don't have their starting running back either. There is that. Next name, the Warriors. Last night, Golden State at full strength got blown out 113 to 93 at home by the Raptors playing without Kawhi Leonard. All right, Pablo, Raptors, are they the best team in the NBA? They are the best team in the NBA right now. And I hate having to do that addendum, but there is a scale of excuses that the Warriors tend to turn to in the regular season when games of this kind tend to happen. At first, it's okay. Steph's out, or KD's out, or Draymond's out, or they're resting people, but this was a full-strength team, and so the excuse after the game, Bo, was Steve Kerr saying, we just didn't want it as much as the Raptors did, and so while the Raptors are the best right now, I do wonder, do the Warriors just have that extra gear they're going to turn on at some point, although not in December? But see, that's what I say, though. I wonder for Kerr if that's an excuse or that is a legitimate explanation. We mm. talked about this before when it comes to these dynasties. What brings them down is fatigue, right? Like, what, how do you keep looking for something to aim for when you're just going back to this thing that you've had however many times before? There's yeah. three for many of the guys that happen to be on the team. Now, to the question is whether the Raptors are the best team in the NBA. They have the second best point differential in the league right now. Milwaukee is at number one there. Toronto is very, very good, and they look like they will be the best regular season team in the NBA. And bless your heart for getting that, but that is different than being the team that we think is going to win the championship. During the regular season, how far you go, like nine or ten deep matters more. During the playoffs, it really only goes to seven or eight. Like, we can go through all these different things. 
But man, for a regular season, a lot of big long dudes. They can do a lot of switching. Yep. A legitimate superstar player, a great point guard. They've got a lot. Yeah, they have a different model that they're piloting. Obviously, to do this without Kawhi is kind of the best audition you can have in the regular season for the postseason to see the Shiakams and the Ananobis, but mostly the Ibakas and the Lowry step up in the absence of your clear superstar. But I do wonder, Kevin Durant went off last night. Steph Curry only took 12 shots. Klay Thompson is shooting under 40% from three on the year. I do think if you're Steve Kerr, that even if you believe that there is another gear, that there is that turbo button, I do think you got to be concerned. Yeah. Well, I do also, agree with well, you on that. Yeah, the turbo part, like, it, it goes down after you use it, right? But so many yes. times that you can dial that thing up when you talk about it with this team. The other thing is, man, as you look at them and you go through all the numbers and everything that has changed with them, we just have to say at some point, the rest of the league is catching up. I mean, they went seven last year to Houston and took an injured Chris Paul in order for them to get out and of that 27 one. straight mysteries. Yeah, we saw them go down, the go the seven with Oklahoma City in 2016. Like, this team is not as far ahead of the rest of the league as people would like to believe. And what's crazy is that the league, look at the standings sometime. The league is, in fact, wide open. It's the Raptors pulling away from everybody both East and West, and then you have the Warriors at second in the West, but then ahead of them is the Nuggets, and then there's that mishmash of Thunder Clippers and stuff, and that's where, if you are one of those teams, you are waiting and praying for an injury, that's because all, that's, what you that's need. all you need they for be, that door to be right. wide open. Right, because the thing with Toronto is, they still only got one guy you can trust in the postseason, and that's Leonard. That's the only guy that they have like that. The thing about the Warriors is, they've really got like two and a half, because you can trust Draymond, you just don't want to trust him with the ball necessarily when it comes around, but the difference between having two and having one is crucial. Massive. Needing to have two is why the Warriors winning got Kevin Durant. Only having one is why I'm still skeptical of the Raptors. Hmm. Last name is Michael Jordan. Last night, the Charlotte owner watched his team beat Detroit on a dramatic game winner by Jeremy Lamb. Put Charlotte up by two, but a one-shot technical was called against Hornet Malik Monk for sprinting off the bench to celebrate before time expired, which led to this <laughs> courtside discipline. Let's watch. And I'll answer the question you have in your head already. And the answer is yes, this is our king. <laughs> Jeremy this Lamb takes the this, shot. This is our king. This is him. Can't believe you did that. What? Are you serious? Yeah, you know. It was, Come on, Mike. Game was Bye. Now, yeah, like, you kind of missed right there. Yep. And now Monk comes back, and now he connects. Yes. A full-on <laughs> completion of that transaction. By the way, they weren't going to lose the game. No, they weren't. This was just Michael Jordan trying to teach somebody who is far, far younger than him, who was born in 1998, Fomani, but... This reminds me, there are Jordan rules even still today. The idea of privilege that Michael Jordan gets that other owners do not. Who else could do that? Well, well, hold on. That's not just about owners. There aren't that many players in the league that could get away Humans. with doing this. No, no, no. Only Mike could get away with this. And honestly, like, I think about all the other people that would do that. But like, look, man, you can't be doing that to him in front of people. You can't be embarrassing him like that. But it's Mike. And you know why? He is our king. Yes, he Our is. king decided that he needed a playful smack upside the head. Yes. Right? In fact, the ESPN.com headline I saw today said that Mike scolded him. What is upside not allowed in our style guide at <laughs> ESPN? Could you not put upside in that headline? Because if I told you he smacked him upside the head, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. I feel like the AP rule book should allow for smacking upside the head in a headline. Also, <laughs> remember we had Jordan walking around midtown Manhattan with the case of nice tequila? Other billionaires who own teams can't do that. But here, by the way, is Malik Monk being asked about all of this today because there was a postscript. Michael called it a tap of endearment. Uh, it was. Today. Um, was that kind of what it was? I mean, just kind of a big brother, little brother thing is what he said. What? Big, big, big brother. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was about the same thing. Yeah. It was, like I said, it was just nothing. He was just playing with me. Yeah, he was. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think he liked it. But you just got to take that one. Oh, yeah. When you get confronted about it afterwards, that is not the time to express your masculinity. It is to note that if he is my brother, he's the biggest brother that has ever lived. Well, also, if he turned around and been like, hey, Mike, you ain't going to do that no more. Charles Oakley would come down from the Raptors. <laughs> Right, like the Raptors. I said the Raptors. The Raptors. The Raptors. He the Raptors. would come out of the extinction yes, to yeah, literally that, yeah, destroy that's what it takes. you. Charles Oakley's entire purpose in life is to stop somebody from Malik Monk thinking that he got the place to tell Mike he can't slap him in the back of the head. I'll be like, man, Mike slap me in the back of the head when he have a cup of coffee. That's right. Coming up next, Brett Favre. Can you imagine him as the coach of the Packers? Oh, I would.
I love podcasts like High Noons and Bomani's and the one I do every morning for you people. Coming to you from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. You know, now that I think about it, I'm surprised that Jordan didn't tell Charles Barkley to smack him in the back of the head. <laughs> I mean, Charles Oakley, rather. Um, except, ooh, Oak wouldn't be able to play. He no, just... no, and I feel like Charles Oakley is definitely on arena watch lists in general. Yeah, well, he's, well, he's on one. The one that matters. Quote, obviously, I'm testing how stupid it was that people actually took that quote and made it law as, oh, my God, he's a fake moon landing truther. Says Steph Curry. Pablo, we believe he was joking about doubting the man stepped foot on the moon. Not fully, but what's most offensive, Bo, is that he is doing the thing where, oh, it's deep to troll the public and make them all distracted by a famous person saying something ridiculous. But that is not only not deep and not novel, that is the story of our time. Like, it is far more interesting if he genuinely has questions or if he is genuinely trolling not doing the in-between thing where I was testing you and protesting how dumb the media is. Hold on, help me out on something here, just so I make sure I understand. He says that he was joking, obviously joking, on the podcast, and that he was silently protesting how stupid it was that people took that quote and made it law. When did this protest happen? Help me out here. In like, his like, brain. Right, was he protesting on the podcast when he said it? Right, right. and where everybody yeah. just agreed seemingly yeah, very this is my thing. And this is where, I mean, and I can understand this from Steph, because honestly, he's not the most entertaining character in the world if he doesn't have a basketball in his hand, right? He said, obviously, it was, he was joking. It was not obvious, sir. No. Perhaps you need to get better at joke telling, and then we won't have this problem. Yeah, and it's not safe to assume that everybody believes or that it's that it is in fact the case in reality that smart people only believe the true and smart things and stupid people only believe stupid things because I know that there are many athletes, some of whom have worked at this company, continue to, who don't believe in dinosaurs, Bomani Jones, and they went to very good colleges. Yeah, although I'm realizing I'm having an argument with some people who didn't get a joke that I told, but I'm, I, I'm good at telling jokes. I like to think that you and Steph Curry are very different in every way possible. I'd assume. Next quote. It's definitely interesting, but believe me, that's not going to happen. How can you not be intrigued by that? Said Brett Favre when asked by TMZ about being considered for the job of new Packers head coach after Mike McCarthy's firing. Is there a world where you see this being a good idea? All right, Pablo. Brett Favre. What did, he, what did he learn after two years in the NFL? <laughs> what did he learn after two years in the NFL? That he could do whatever he wanted. Yeah, but you know what else he learned? What, what a nickel defense was. Oh, yeah. He didn't know what the nickel defense was except for two years into his career. Oh, we have I watch a video film, but I had to be honest. I mean, when I first started watching film, I was just watching the game. Just watching the game. I kept hearing our coaches talk about nickel. Hey, They're going to sub, and it's going to be nickel. Well, I just played along. Okay, you had nickels in, you know. That. Finally, one day I pulled Ty aside and said, Ty, what are they talking about when they say nickel? He looks at me, he goes, you're joking, right? And I said, no. I said, what is nickel? He says, well, they pull out a linebacker and they bring in a, a DB. Passing situation. And I said, that, that's it? He said, yeah, that's it. I said, who cares? <laughs> yeah, that's the guy that you want to be the head coach of the team. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Aaron Rodgers, you wanted an offensive genius who you got along with. Here's the guy that you feuded with when you kept on bringing up how much higher your Wonderlick score was as a rookie, and he doesn't know what a nickel defense yeah. was. Well, also, I got news for you. If uh, Brett Favre is made the coach of the Packers, Aaron Rodgers' opinion ain't going to matter very much. Aaron Rodgers ain't going to be the quarterback anymore if Brett Favre is the coach of the Packers. You don't think that he's going to let him be a kid out there? There's the new quarterback of the Packers right there. Ooh. If Brett Favre, <laughs> you think Brett Favre is going to be able to turn away from the opportunity to play football again? This, you think he's going to be that close to football and not want to go be a kid out there? I think you are right. My issue, though, is that I just saw a headline that said Brett, Co Brett Favre estimated he had thousands yes. of concussions yes. as yes. a football uh, player. Look, look, he looks like Chris Christopherson these days, but I get the feeling that he'd go out there and play some more football. I wonder if he can sing. Quote. Bleep this team and this fan base. Yeah, I'll try my chances to go to a winning team next year. Love the R words, but this ain't, this ain't it for the African. Hashtag love. <laughs>
Bro, watching the linebacker and defensive captain Mason Foster in an Instagram DM that was leaked by a fan. Pablo, what does this tell you about Foster and the state of this football team? It is worse than we thought. <laughs> it's worse than we thought because I have not heard of a captain of a football team having to turn to an anonymous fan Instagram account for therapy. <laughs> What was startling wasn't just that the fan Instagram account betrayed Mason Foster, it's that Mason Foster was earnestly spilling his soul about how awful it is to be Mason Foster, Washington football team member. Morale is so low. And you got to think about what it is to be a player under these circumstances, right? The fans seem to be done with this team in a way that is startling if you have any familiarity with the history of this mm -hmm. franchise, that these fans would turn on that team and be justified in doing so. So the fans have turned on the franchise, which means by proxy, they have kind of turned on the players. The same franchise that the fans don't like, the players have to play for. Like you don't like Snyder owning your team. Snyder is their boss. So they don't like the bosses, the players, and the fans don't like them right now. What are they coming to work for? We Jets. talk about, well, that, but we talk about stands a lot, Bo. We kind of ignore the etymology or the etymology, as it were. The, the stand is supposed to, at the end, get very angry with you and probably try and betray you. We finally have a true stand by the dictionary definition of the term. Right. Or maybe the fan was like, dude, can't you see his pain? <laughs> when, you, when you feel the same pain, uh, coming up next, are you here for an eight-team college football playoff? And that smacked him in the back of the head. What do you think he does? I think it's that Tyler Hansborough, Ron yeah. Artest scenario. Oh, my bad, Ron. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You are allowed to do whatever you want. It's like to a me. scene from my favorite movie where he goes, Oops, I thought you were somebody else. <laughs> what movie? Is it Friday? We just watched Friday last night. That's why I thought you were testing me. Did I, did I fail? Today's number. Eight. That is how many teams would be in the college football playoff under this new proposal. Both fans of the University of Central Florida seem to be pushing very hard for this, mostly in your mentions. Is a UCF situation, the small school getting left out of the four-team field, enough to spur change like this? No, not really. I mean, look, this is the thing. And uh, this proposal would have automatic bursts for the champions of the Power Five, and there'd be a place for a group of five school to come in. And I yep. said on the internet, I was like, look, nobody really cares if Central Florida gets in. All these Central Florida people kept blowing me up. This is what I was trying to tell y'all. If this playoff is four teams, by the time the actual playoff comes, nobody cares who's outside of it. If you make it an 18 playoff and Central Florida don't get in, by the time it comes around, nobody cares about it. If you are here to argue that access is the most important thing and that fairness is the most important thing, and that's why you want an 18 tournament, the players don't have access to the <laughs> money. Like if I'm standing on a principle, it ain't a principle to get UCF in the playoffs, to get some money in these boys' pockets. Bo, how dare you forget the statue that we built in honor of TCU in 2014. It's right over there. <laughs> oh, wait, no, no one cares once the games start. Like every year, for UCF, to their credit, it's been two years of grievances, but the entire idea of an A-team playoff is only there to do one thing, which is to build TV ratings and entertain the fans. It's not to write justices in the landscape, it's to make everybody money, except for the people who should get the yes, money. Yes, like that's the thing, if any fight that you're on about this and what you demand to have, if you demand anything about this playoff more than you demand that these dudes get money, you weak, man. There's no, there's no way around this. The other thing to remember about this playoff is, and I remember this the first year that they had it, seeing the coaches whose teams had made it, just talking about the physical toll right, that it took on sure. their players to have to play this extra game. Every time you talk about stretching out playing another game, I'm like, so what are you going to do, give the players more education? Because right. that's what the salary is. <laughs> exactly. No, the education stays flat, the games are more. You're shortchanging them. You get hurt and you stop learning, yes. but good now, news, you get zero dollars. Might not get to go pro. In close. I would like to show you the reddest flag this side of China. <laughs> There's a finance company called Luxury Asset Capital that lends money to athletes using their contracts, property, and pensions as collateral. And if that ain't shaky enough, they just hired this guy. Oh. There he is. That, wow. guy, that guy right there is going to be selling you a loan and putting it on your pension. That's a union man, right? The WNBA's Derek Fisher is involved with what has all the feelings of a 
possibly, what's another word for predatory that's not gonna get me in legal trouble? You don't wanna use the word shark, is that what you're avoiding? Yeah, shark is something involving uh, something look. taking advantage of someone else because that's the business of the, lending. The fact that you're specifically going after athletes indicate that you're just looking for whales that you don't think know no better. That's like right. that, That's what it seems to be. This also opens up the possibility that one day you could be looking down the street and be like, hey man, that looks like my car. <laughs> and then you can look a little closer and be like, hey man, that looks like Derek Fisher driving my car. And what, is that my girl? <laughs> you got my car and my girl? Matt Barnes will represent you at no cost. Oh, yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt Barnes will repo your car from the <laughs> repo man. In closing, I would like to congratulate the Twitter account at Laker Film Room for their investigative journalism into one of our favorite subjects here at High Noon, NBA DAP. This film on guard Josh Hart was posted on the Silver Screen and Roll blog. Let's watch. Oh, no. 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 Okay, oh. but, 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 but watch what happened. Watch what. But, yeah. He he daps himself <laughs> in these moments of being and left And when back. you're just, yo, oh, guys, swing and a miss. Lance Stevenson, the guy who will blow into people's ears, won't touch your hand, wow. and then he seems to, appears to have bad dap timing though, because he gets cats after they like stop looking. Yeah, there's a miscommunication thing, and it's just sad to watch Josh Hart because. He's promising he is a guy that I underestimated, but it seems like his teammates also yeah. are doing that same thing. No, nah, but what he needs to learn is the dap yourself thing only calls more attention to it. Like, if they miss you on the dap, you need to turn it into that right there. Like, yo, what's going All right, I see you, big baby. Right? I see you always <laughs> work because I see you as the same sentiment as the dap.